Hello viewers, thanks for joining me here for another unboxing video. This is the second unboxing video for uh, this lot of bottles that I purchased from a 70's digger slash collector. And I've got several tote boxes full of bottles. So I'm just going to gradually go through them and post videos of them intermittently between digging videos. So in this box, I think I got another 25 bottles in it. So I guess uh, we're just going to haul them out of the box, have a look at them like in the previous video. And for the most part, none of them are cleaned up. So, well, I mean, there's no mud or anything on them, but they, they're still quite dirty. All right, so let's get into that. I also got a drink going here, folks. You might want to grab one yourself, but... Uh, the doctor told me I had to cut back on my drinking, so I thought I'd try a little mind over matter, and this is my new drinking mug here. Seems to be working pretty good. I've acquired a strong desire to eat preservatives, though, for some reason. I don't quite understand that. <laughs> oh, man. The first bottle uh, I'm going to pull out of the box here, I'm going to do this strategically because there's big ones and small ones and they're all over the place here. Let me grab this lovely aqua blue colored one here. Imperial Pint, it says up here on the shoulder. Boston's not real great on that side. Old Irish Whiskey, check it out. Mitchells and Company of Belfast Limited. Nice old blown bottle with a applied lip on that. Check that out. Yes sir. Pretty globby lip on that. Nice big bubble up there too. Okay, that's a nice first bottle. You see that? There we go. No telling how long this video is going to be. I guess we'll find out when we get to the end. Um, well here's a here's another flask. Check that out. What a nice color. It's almost like one of those. I don't know what to call that an olive green or yellow. Boys, you don't find those too often. Shoe fly at that. Nice. Yellow shoe fly flask. Beauty. What's this? Okay. Here's a another one of those graduated Lysol bottles. Well, we say it's graduated. It's got these lines on it. I'm assuming those are uh, indicating like dosage marks or something. It's a nice one. Appears to be blown as well, so that's always a bonus. Had one of those in the last unboxing videos. Let me have a drink here. I'll wet my whistle. It's this one. Nice aqua blue. Whitmore, Boston, USA. Fairly common bottle. This one's a uh, blown in a mold. It's an earlier one. Okay, there's that. There's a Foss bottle, Portland, Maine. Standard quality, full strength. This one appears to be machine made. Looks must be an early machine made one though. There's a Owens glass mark there on the base. The O in a square. That's a 19, 1918 or 1919 to 1929 or something. So yeah, definitely machine made. Okay, uh, next up, 
grab this one here. All right, we got some script uh, embossing on the edge here. It says Dodge. So my guess is that's a uh, an embalming fluid bottle. Yeah, it's got your measurements up the edge there. Looks like it's got some uh, remnants of embalming fluid in it. Lug style screw top. You got the three lugs there, which would indicate uh, the late 1920s, most likely. Machine made bottle. How about this one? Dirt solvent. Well, that's interesting. Oh. The Piper Manufacturing Company, Portland, Maine. Blown in a mold, tooled lip. Dirt solvent. Must have been like a cleaning agent. I don't know. I didn't do any research on these. I just grabbed a bunch and put them in the box and we're just going from there. Okay. Check this one here out. Big old Seagram's bottle. I found one of these last year, I believe it was. Mighty Oaks from Little Acorns Grow. Can we get a focus on that? I'm going to get a new camera, man. There we go. Mighty Oaks from Little Acorns Grow. Machine made, most likely from the 1930s. That's a Dominion glass mark. Established uh, 1928. No lid on this one. Beautiful amber bottle, though. Check out the embossing on that. Wow, eh? Nice bottle. And what else is in the box here? Let's grab this one here. Okay. This is machine made. Huh. Okay. Well, it's a California fig syrup company. Calafig. Sterling Products. Limit it. So, so successor? Huh. That's it. I've seen uh, other folks on YouTube dig California fig syrup bottles. I've never dug one personally, but I got one in this lot, so that's a bonus. What's this? Looks like a medicine. Yeah. Frank Smith Druggist. St. Stephen, New Brunswick. Okay, well, that's a first for me. So that's another druggist from St. Stephen, New Brunswick. Another local druggist. How many drug stores they have up there? Freaking me out here. Okay, I just had to go transfer all that footage to my desktop. I don't know what's wrong with my camera here. It does hold about eight or nine minutes of footage and ran out of space. So that's kind of bizarre. But anyways, I took the opportunity to make another drink. Uh, Next bottle, this just appears to be a slick cobalt blue, blown in a mold, and it just has some numbers on the base there, 3551, a nice corked out bottle though, nice color. Oh, this bottle here too, yeah. This would have had paper labels up here and down here. I should see if I can find a picture of that online with the labels on it. And if I can, I'll post it here right after this clip. Might be interesting to see. Next up is this here. Oh, what the heck? How'd that get in that box? I must have put that in that box last night after getting home from pulling a muscle down at the seafood disco. This here's a pellet gun. You just crank that bag like that, put your pellet in, pump it up. You can pump that ten times if you want. Oh, bang, there you go. There you can uh, shoot rats with that. Okay, well, let's get back to the bottles. <laughs> Whew. Check this one here out. Shaped like a little barrel. Manganese glass. Blown in a mold. Trying to get focused on it here. There we go. Look, you can see the little handle down there. Perhaps that was a perfume? I don't know what else would be in that. Cool little bottle, though. Turning uh, amethyst color. Next up, let's grab this one here. What a nice color on that. 
and I can see it's embossed. Spin it around. Check it out. Irvin Lucas Bowls. Amsterdam. Okay, well they were, uh, I think they, they made gin for sure, so I don't know if this is a gin bottle, but machine made. A bit of the cork still in there. Wow, cool bottle. Love the color. That's not your everyday green color there. What am I going to do with that? Almost out of sight there. Let's put it there. I'm running out of space. How about this one here? Highland Spring, Lewiston, Maine. This be a soda bottle. Registered. Crown top. Hmm. This bottle not to be sold. Lewiston, Maine. Something that here. We're going to need some space. Okay, let me grab this jar. Here's a trademark lightning well, food jar. And it is full of stoppers. Well, it's not full, but it's got some in it. Big, big glass stopper on the top there, too. Okay, cool bottle. What's this one here? Lots of embossing on it. It's machine made as well, crown top. Durfee Embalming Fluid Company. Concentrated Fluid, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Grand Rapids, Michigan. Another embalming fluid. Cool bottle. Another soda bottle. Kissed. Lots of embossing on that. Check it out. Anybody know the year on that one? Machine made. Pretty good uh, variety of colors going on there so far. This one here is a Dr. True's Elixir. Established 1851. Of course, that's not the date of the bottle. This is a machine made bottle, so after 1900s. Auburn, Maine. There might be some markings on the base there, but I can't make them out. Too much crud on there. Yeah, let's stick that one over here. Here's an Everett and Barron's Shoe Dressing, Providence, Rhode Island, USA. Blown in a mold with a tooled lip. Now these tooled lips, the, the tool they use would come down over it and clamp. And I don't know if they spun it in the tool or what, but there was different shaped tools that would give you different shaped lips. And of course... The length of the tool would determine where that seam ended. So the seam doesn't have really anything to do with it. The length of the seam doesn't have anything to do with the date of the bottle. So I know that's a common misconception. Here's a uh, Horlux. Kind of got a greenish color to it. I always like getting the Horlux. Fit that one there. And we got another druggist. Love Clark and Company Druggist, St. Stephen, New Brunswick. Another blown in a mold with a tooled lip. Lots of dirt on that one. That might even be manganese glass if it was cleaned up and set out in the sun. So we basically got about four or five items left here. This one here is a Watkins, some sort of smaller size one, and it's machine made, no base markings, there's dirt falling out of it. We got manganese glass ink, you can kind of see the uh, 
purplish color there. If we can get focused. Machine made one, so 1900s. We got, of course, we got a Johnson's American Anodyne Liniment Bottle. Seems to be a few of these in this collection. And from the previous video as well. This is a blown in a mold bottle. I always enjoy digging those ones. Dark time. Mmm, olives. And uh, finally, the salt shaker. Check it out. Not like this crackling all in there. This is probably quite old. There's a mark on the base here. Oh, let me see if I can get this cork out of there without breaking it. Okay, yep. Yeah. I can't make out what that says. If anybody knows, give me a shout down there in the comments what that might say. You recognize it. You've got to be hand painted. It's all uh, the paint seems to be a little off kilter and the uh, shaker itself seems to be a little off kilter and we also got the pepper to match it so we got a matching set of those this one's got some paper around that cork must have been cork must have been loose but uh, check it out nice little salt and pepper shakers cool beans Okay, folks, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed seeing the bottles all come out of the box and maybe seeing something you haven't seen before. So I enjoyed uh, showing them to you. See you all in the next one, folks. Over and out. Have a great day.